for April the 28th, 2023, we talk about Crab Champions, Shard Punk Verminfall, the Young Horses Free Range Collection, and much more. Welcome to Level 455. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Meismith. I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Welcome back, Ben. Hey, thanks, yeah. for, thanks for taking me back. Yeah. I told uh, you guys we should have checked the body. <laughs> <laughs> taking you back after committing the unforgivable sin of <laughs> handing your spot over to Jala when she asked to be on the show, <laughs> which is a really nice thing to do. <laughs> I uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I there's a chess club I go to on Tuesday nights if if we're not recording. Oh. And so that's, that's what I do if I'm not here. And they're equally fun. Nice. Well... Uh, I mean, I I'm, feel I feel like that's kind of a backhanded wait, compliment to that, us. Like it is less we're, fun. We're as fun as a chess. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I like chess. Yeah. No. No. I it's not fine. Understand chess. I I, I I I like you guys, but you know, reading books just uh, <laughs> look, guys. <laughs> it was a compliment from my perspective. I swear. <laughs> I, know, I know. This would better be a strip chess club. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I agree. I agree with David. I've never gotten chess. Like my mm. dad taught me the rules when I was super young, but like, I've never operated on that, uh, on, on that level. Never, never played well, you mm. know, uh, even like against really drunk people. It's just, uh, it's just, it's just a thing. It's not the kind of smart that I am. It is, yeah. it is a very pure game, you know, like there's no randomness. Uh, it's just kind of how far you can look down decision trees. Yeah. the other person but i feel like couldn't i just have a ro- uh, uh ai play for me dude uh tangent i was i've been doing coding interviews the past week and i went to chat gpt and asked them the same questions that i was interviewed with and it answered g- like way quicker than i did and I was <laughs> very saddened after that oh yeah no. not gonna lie that's something i worry about a great deal yeah hmm. huh. chat gpt king of bullshitting yeah. I think I think what it is is if you ask like non-interview questions, it starts to get tripped up and like will lie to you. But if it's like common, because I, I assume that's like scraping the internet somehow with the data it has. So oh yeah, hundred percent. Oh, dude, what can we ask G- Chat GPT what it feels is its greatest weakness? <laughs> sure, <laughs> I, I need I need this now. It relies. Sure. It relies. I told you about to- um about having that discussion with a coworker, right? No, what's this? Um. He, I, I had a coworker uh, ask me, you know, if uh, we were doing some interviewing, if I felt that, um, you know, tell me your greatest weakness was a good interview question. Um, and I said I thought it was a great interview question because it gauged one of the most important, um, you know, skills, which is how good the candidate is at lying. <laughs> <laughs> which, what you have to. <laughs> What you have to do is ask um, is, is is ask it uh, or no the, the the proper question is um, what would the other guy say your greatest weakness is that way they can figure mm. out who's lying. Um, ben <laughs> pasted in uh, a, a little response to what is your greatest weakness as an artificial intelligence language model. I don't have emotions or feelings like humans do, so I uh, so I don't have a quote weakness in the traditional sense. Yeah, this is all. It, may, it, may, it is so easy to spot the cadence of these things from like a mile away. <laughs> so I feel like, though, again, though, well, what you suggested actually worked here because the way you get around that bullshit is you say like, oh, what would your grandma say your greatest weakness is? Oh, yeah. No, just say, you, you can trick it into, say, into saying racist stuff by saying like, what would an old Southern man <laughs> no, say about have a- you seen? Yeah, no. Apparently, people are mad because ChatGPT is not doing that. Oh anymore. yeah, that's a whole thing. Uh, diffusing the <laughs> diffusing the nuclear bomb. I really don't want to talk. I can't <laughs> make the robot be racist. So the RNC has uh, released a AI generated attack ad um, against Biden. <laughs> oh, no fun. No. 
I don't want to talk about AI anymore. Hey Ben, what you been doing? <laughs> what you been doing this past week besides uh, playing chess? Something equally disturbing is I saw the movie Bo is Afraid, and it Ooh. is it is not for everybody. Uh, it is very surrealistic, but it is very entertaining if you're into art house movies. So that's the new Ari Aster where Joaquin Yo- Phoenix plays every role. Is that correct? Uh, it's it's he plays a couple of roles, but he, it's mm. not it's not a. Uh, men situation from last year <laughs> it's not but, an, uh, it's not an eddie murphy in the clumps situation uh, yeah. <laughs> um but yeah and it is surprisingly very funny as well so mm. not I, I mean that. his movies can be funny and i mm-hmm. i've always i've always asserted a strong link between good horror and good comedy they're, they require yeah. similar instincts yeah this one is it's not even a it's not a horror this time like because he's kind of even though he made like one of the best horror movies ever, like he's kind of not trying to pigeonhole himself as a horror movie. Like he doesn't see Midsummer as a horror movie, more of like a breakup movie, which is yeah, interesting. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. um, cool. Uh, I mean, that's a movie is all I have. I went and saw the D and D movie. We're going to be talking about it <gasps> yes. on Adaptation Decay. It's good. So mm. amazing. Yeah. yeah. I I yeah. was actually kind of surprised at how how fun it was. It's weird you know, these forgotten realms, things that I read in like, like late middle school, Mm -hmm. having that stuff pop up on screen. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, Did did I make the joke here about how many of their just in its dental, like travel sets look like basic land cards. You did. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's neat. It's a really good looking movie. Genuine laughs out of me. Uh, to the point where I felt out of out of place because there were like five people in the theater. I went at like 11 a.m. on a Friday because <laughs> because <laughs> that's that's how I roll. Uh, but like I was the only person like laughing at a bunch of stuff, and it's like, come on, you guys, stop making me feel like an asshole. Wow, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, good time. But that's really all I have besides besides work and family stuff. Oh, uh, David, how about you? So uh, this past weekend was the uh, uh, local comic book uh, convention. So I, I, you know, went to that with some friends. So that was a lot of fun. Cool. Uh, the headliner was uh, Shatner was there. Okay. However, oh, I did not. This, yeah. I did not get to see him, unfortunately. However, I did get to uh, me. I I don't know comic books, but a whole bunch of like old uh like comic book like old marvel editors and uh story writers and stuff like that and i'm not at the place where i can um oh where like i know who these people are you know i don't have that type of thing but i can still you know kind of enjoy the um you know can enjoy the stories uh Mm-hmm. Someone asked him about because a bunch of them were editors. Like, what was the uh, like weirdest thing that you had to veto that someone wanted to put in a comic? <laughs> and uh, that's interesting. Talk about someone wanted to like uh, uh, rip off one of Spider Man's arms. <laughs> um, and then one of the guys is like, "Yeah, probably the biggest thing I didn't veto." Uh, in my time as an editor was uh, killing Gwen Stacy. Oh, mm. huh. Well, that's kind of important. <laughs> yes. And then he ran from the room. No. Yeah, yeah. Talked about uh, apparently the writer like couldn't go to cons for several years. Oh, oh no. Huh. So, yeah. It, it, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, did uh, did some uh, cosplay. I, I posted um, in our chat, I... Um, Oh, uh, basically previewed what I'm gonna be wearing to Ren Fair this year. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Um, other than that, I'm just trying to, um, you know, appreciate that uh, this week, uh, you know, on the podcast, uh, we all have uh, something that uh, Tucker Carlson does not an audience. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's that's my uh, affirmation for the week. <laughs> yeah, that made enough of a splash that, that that even my mom sent me a screen grab of the of the news alert. So mm-hmm. nice, yeah. So you know there was that. 
she doesn't even like him. It was just, you know, she was just like, Hey, I know this will make you happy. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was in the car. I was driving to Columbus. <laughs> it was like, uh, Oh, Oh, Oh yeah. Here's this. I had no idea that it happened. She was the first person who broke the news. And I was like, Oh, that that'll serve me well at sea. Yes. <laughs> so it, were you driving your car now? No, no. Still driving the rental. Oh, it's a Wait. whole thing. It's a whole thing. Uh, the, the, it's currently in the middle of being est- getting the estimate. I called. I called yesterday, and they said it was like it's still in disassembly. Like they were trying to put the estimate together. I should have an idea of a timeline when they call me with the actual estimate. Uh, I, I got. I mean, I, I'm resigned. I, I am going to hand over the rental on the on the second of May, and then uh, borrow my parents' car like a chump. So. Um, like like someone can, who can who can rely on family in times of trouble. Yeah, yeah like a, a yeah, like somebody <laughs> with an active social support network <laughs> that will absorb all these mis you know misfortunes that I suffer, and I should be incredibly grateful. But I'm still, I'll still be driving my mom's car around like a chump. I, yeah, I think you should just be like, like, like a hardcore biker guy, like. Uh, <laughs> You know, spandex, uh, everything. And I, 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 I got, I got my bike. I'm afraid to take it on the road, like out on, out of my neighborhood and onto the roads because I can't find a helmet big enough for my head. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked about this before. Oh, I'm sensitive no. about it. <laughs> uh, Dennis, how about you? Uh, I've had a good week. Uh, this week was, uh, my middle kid Milo's seventh birthday. Mm. So we did a, a birthday party at a, a local park shelter, invited all his friends from class, and um, he wanted it to be Minecraft themed. Okay. Um, and so we we found online like a shit ton of blow up Minecraft swords. Oh, yeah. okay. It was, like, yeah. It's just it's just you know like a little like the 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 clapper things that you have in the football stadium, only vaguely shaped like a sword with a Minecraft print. Uh huh. Um, and man, to watch twenty first graders beat the shit out of each other with a balloon I, sword. I thought, I thought uh, this stopped after 12th grade. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, this, it was, it was a joy. Um, and there, I, there were, I got that joke. Thank you. Thank you. It sounded See, like I, you said t- 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 21st graders, oh. not 21st graders. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, see, I, I, I am having PTSD, fl- PTSD flashbacks to the great Minecraft sword war of, um, a couple days ago. Oh so yeah. That one. Uh, <laughs> my, my dearest Constance, it is brother <laughs> against brother. <laughs> oh yeah. Luke, Luke was running around dual wielding. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's a good party when like the old lady who's power walking past it mm-hmm. is like making gesticulations to the effect of like, is anyone going to take care of these kids? <laughs> uh, I sort them already so. they'll, have. <laughs> yeah, they'll take care of each other. It's fine. <laughs> that's, that's where I like nod at her and hide my sword behind the back. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so cool. yeah. It was, it was a ton of fun. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I mean, and, and pending litigation, you may not be able to answer this. Did any, <laughs> did anybody get hurt, or was it a good time had by all? No, a good time was had by all. Nice. Miraculously, um, and it was it was also next to a creek, um, and and there there was a significant portion where everyone was skipping stones slash you know just chucking rocks into uh-huh. the, the creek so the fact that no one got hurt is really a miracle nice. um thinking back on it we did a bad job planning that um, <laughs> i don't know that sounds like the best job to me yeah it was it was a good time a lot of my favorite times as a kid were i think gauged by how close i was to a creek at the moment mm-hmm. except for that one really mm-hmm. bad time <laughs> We don't talk about we don't go cricket anymore. Not after the accident. <laughs> not, not 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 after old Drifter Joe. <laughs> uh, we found him. Come on. Uh-huh. Uh, well, that's cool. That's a that's also. A, that's a, I have to say, we don't go cricket is the most Midwest thing you've ever seen it said. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, Nice. Well, that's a really good idea for a birthday party. I think a really good idea for an episode would be the regular kind, where we talk about games in the you know in the, in the grind, and then and then the multiplayer, and then the end boss, and we can get started with the grind. The grind, where we talk about games we have been playing over the past period of time or so. Ben, hey, um, 
gonna go to you first. Can I can I interject? Sure. And just just real quick aside, dude. With segues like that, you could totally pick up chicks in your mom's car. <laughs> Probably be the only way. Uh, wait, wait. Was, now you're riding on a Segway. I would. Pick, I, I would. I would pick up more chicks than I would on a Segway. Yes. <laughs> also, I, I love this response someone posted for you know how interview questions for getting on the level. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the challenges of being an AI language model is that my responses can sometimes uh, be too detached from human experiences. Nah, I'm on here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's funny because you can see the, like, copy-pasted parts from the generic response. N- didn't mean to bomb with that. Yeah, didn't. Yeah, <laughs> my bad. Sorry. Anyway, you were, you were throwing to Ben, I believe. I was throwing to Ben. Um, ben, what have you been playing over the past, uh, let's say, period of time or so? Yeah, I got two new ones. Um, I'll start with the more boring one first. Um, I picked up another VR game. Uh, I picked up uh, Moss and Moss 2, which are uh, the second one, Moss 2, uh, came out, I think, more recently, and that mm-hmm. was more highly regarded. Um, the, it was, it's been given like kind of like 9 out of 10s or so from things that I've read. Hold yeah. on, hold on. The sequel came out more recently uh, you yeah lost me. you lost yeah. me the C- yeah wait what Sub- Is, substantially more recently the, like it, the yeah yeah because like, of vr timelines yeah yeah the, the sequel came out in the past few months the first one came out i think for the original uh playstation vr and, yeah like, some, that was like back in 20, 2014 2015 something like that yeah, yeah. i also got that joke well, oh, I, 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 I did I, not. I, I got, I got, I got the joke. Like it, it, it technically was a weird thing to say, but I understood it more on more in the sense of what uh, the way Ben was saying it. You interpreted it as a human instead of an AI model. I, I yes. might be outing myself here. I God, is everybody? <laughs> not not again Cole, Cole you, you <laughs> stated that you didn't want to talk about AI anymore thus guaranteeing it will be woven throughout the rest of this episode jeez oh, okay <laughs> well I'm glad that's how this works uh, Moss you play you play an itty bitty mouse going going around dioramas you right? play yeah. as a moss yeah Moss the mouse a uh, moss in the crick I don't oh my god <laughs> 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 Shows spiraling. Um, yeah, you, so I, I've got. You can buy them both as a bundle, so that's why I picked them up both. Uh, picked up both of them, and I more wanted to play the sequel since that's more highly regarded. But I figured I'd play the first one just so I had context. It wasn't missing mm-hmm. out on anything. Um, so I'm maybe like an hour or two through it, maybe maybe two or three. Um, it's basically you are. It has this like fantasy lore where it's like you know like the mouse has a destiny. Uh, you are a reader, which is a a silent ghost that is like overwatching the mouse and helping it out is like the idea of the game. And that's so like if kinda... it moves if it moves from cover, you take a shot at it. Uh, dude, this is not like DMZ. <laughs> they haven't <laughs> they haven't gotten th- that far yet. Like um, XCOM. <laughs> yeah, this uh, it's more just like puzzle based things, and it's like kind of physics based puzzles to some extent. Um, where you can interact with certain parts of the environment, like lift gates, stuff like that, turn switches, things happen, that sort of thing. Um, it's okay. It's the, like it's nothing to write home about, I guess. Um, I think honestly, the thing that I've been most impressed by is there's like a, a hub world uh, that takes place in this giant cathedral that reminds me of Anor Londor from Dark Souls, mm. and it and it's just like man, they should make a game out of that. Like if you could just like walk around Anor Londor, that would be sweet. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the thing I've most been impressed by, which is maybe a little bit of uh, damnation by faint praise. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know if I will, yeah. So it's just like a puzzle game. Nothing much beyond that. I don't think I have too much more to say about it. Um, it's but I'm ex- one, it's one okay. of my fa- favorite kinds of VR that you really don't see happen an awful lot. So much about it is so much VR is going for being immersive, like you are the thing. Yeah. Whereas, whereas Moss being, um, you are watching something, uh, you know, like I like literally, but like, like I said before, these are dioramas, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and affecting the world as opposed to directly controlling the thing. Uh, yeah. like that is really interesting to me. Yeah. I will say a unique mechanic of it is like in these dioramas, like, uh, they kind of set it up in a way where it's like, if you lean in a certain direction, you can kind of see more of the scene mm-hmm. because they have kind of like Easter eggs, uh, scattered throughout the maps that you can sometimes get to and pick up. Um, like they're basically like, uh, like the puzzle pieces in like braid or something like that. Yeah. But 
it it does have you kind of like leaning over as you're playing to try and see like every corner of the diorama, which is interesting. Not many games have done that yeah. as did, well. Did you ever play Astro Boy? I, I have not. I think that's only for the original PSVR. Yeah, um, that's uh, it. They haven't updated it yet. Nope. Yeah. Because okay. that that was uh did that a ton where just there, okay. there are all these little secrets and elements that you were kind of ducking and, and looking around to do. So if you gotcha. liked Moss uh, and Moss 2, that's probably your next stop. Yeah. Um, assuming you can find it. Astrobot Rescue Mission is rad as hell. Uh, mm-hmm. It's wild that there is not a PSVR 2 port. It's wild that it hasn't come to PC, honestly. The, um, I like the one for the PS5, even though it's like completely different genre, I guess. But mm-hmm. it's a very polished game. Yeah, yeah. It's like a little uh, Nintendo platformer kind of. Yeah. Um, All right. Let's get down to brass tacks. I want to talk about the other game I've been playing. Um, The other game I've been playing is called Crab Champions. Oh, Oh, yeah. This is a game that's in early access. This is a game that's made. Have you guys ever heard of the it's like crab dance video on YouTube? It's like a meme. You know what I'm talking about? It's it's like it's like you with the reaction gift of like a gif of celebration. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a bunch of crabs dancing on a beach. There's a lot of them. Um, (laughs) So that was made by a person in Unreal Engine, the crab video. And Mm -hmm. this same person decided to make a crab based video game in (laughs) in the Unreal Engine. Um, (laughs) This is basically Risk for Rain, but you're a crab. I, I didn't know I needed a crab action hero in my life until now. Yeah. Crab battle. I think it's like 10 bucks, maybe. I, if you got friends to play it with, I'd say it's worth the, the ride, especially right now because it's still like jank and early access. Mm-hmm. Um, so it gets to the point where you can like break the game uh, if you collect enough things. Like there's, you know, yeah, I love games that allow you to break the game, like literally break the process of the, that <laughs> the, is running the game. Yeah. Um, see Baba is you. Uh, see Risk of Rain early access. That's you don't mean like crash the game, break the game. I no, mean, that's, what, that's what he means. <laughs> <laughs> throw so many objects I, on screen I, that it can no I longer render the game. I throw you a lifeline. Yeah. No. Sure. M- Intentionally. Melt, let me melt, your, the game. melt your CPU to slag with Baba yeah. is you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, so that kind of can happen with this game where, uh, the basic loop of the game is, uh, you're in a given biome. I think you have maybe like 10 stages. It's like four battles, a shop, three battles, a shop, and then there's boss fights here and there. Um, and then, so you go through that and then you go to another biome. There's three different biomes per a quote unquote run. And then at the end of each three biomes, you can either start back at the beginning with your current setup, but the enemies are harder. Um, or you can just celebrate and like check out and then you yeah. like it and which is fine. Yeah. You like, uh, you're collecting keys along the way. I think you keep the keys no matter what. So I'm not sure what the, what the advantages of checking out or like celebrating, I guess it's just like a stopping point to be like, Hey, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you can do is like, uh, after in each stage that you're doing a battle it's there's two types, there's either waves where it's just, they throw enemies at you and you have to survive a minute. And the other one is just an arena where it's like you have to kill every enemy and then it's over. Um, Whenever it ends, you're given a a treasure chest. You open it up. There's three different upgrades. You pick one of them. Uh, It's like a random roll. So sometimes you can roll like uh, higher um, rarity items and they Mm -hmm. like are more powerful. Uh, But it literally like allows you to start breaking the game uh, after you've done this enough because like you can get upgrades where there's always one more item that you can see out of a chest. Uh, and, and there's not a cap to that. So like, uh, I think I'll share a picture later, but there's a picture of like 20 items, like, uh, stacked out, like from a single chest, uh, draw and, <laughs> and you can increase the probability of getting better items in them. And then, so, and then you can, uh, there's a perk called like faulty chest where it does, after you pick one, all the remaining items stay there and you can still keep picking them. And there's just a chance that they'll go away. So <laughs> it, it quickly becomes the case that you can just break this game and get like infinite money, infinite power ups. And then what it gets to at that point is it's a fight against your computer in the game where <laughs> if you, it's hard to like turn because when you start firing, you're shooting so many projectiles and it's killing things so quickly. However, <laughs> you need to be pointed towards the things that you're shooting at. And so, but there's too much on screen that it's really hard to like move and face the enemies. So it's, it is possible to get killed in the later levels just because you don't see them coming and you can't turn to face them. <laughs> uh, so that's an interesting emergent mechanic of the game. Yeah. But 
Yeah, but this is a lot of fun to play with uh, multiplayer as well. Um, it is. It does need some kind of uh, updates to kind of polish the experience because it is very, uh, very, very much favors uh, competition amongst the people you're playing with and not cooperation. Okay. So it's like um, when you get to the shop, it won't. When one person buys an item, it's their item. Like nobody else can buy it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like money stones in the back of the shop. When the first person breaks it and they get it, they're the ones who get it. No one else gets it. And so there's a lot of like this mad dashing to try and get yours first before someone else does. <laughs> um, but yeah, so some of those things could probably be improved upon. But again, it's early access, so you can't really judge it too harshly. Um, I was, I was going to say, polish seems to run counter to the value proposition here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so maybe not polish, but better, like a few better game design tweaks yeah, here yeah. or there. Um, the other thing is they have like a pretty good weapon variability. Um, so you're collecting keys as you do runs and every three keys that you get will unlock a new weapon. And there's like maybe 10 different weapons that they have. So there's like, it's similar to like kind of like Resident Evil almost where it's like, here's like the auto pistol. Here's like dual pistols. Here's like a shotgun. Here's dual shotguns, that sort of thing. Here's a rocket Mm -hmm. launcher. Um, uh, and then after that, you, keys still have a value after you've un- unlocked everything, um, where you can turn in three keys for a new perk, like a starting perk when you start your run. Um, yeah, and the platforming itself is kind of interesting. The maps are pretty cool. Each map's kind of like an island of some sort. So th- I guess the first biome is like island, second biome is ice, third biome is lava, like fire, but mm-hmm. essentially the island biome, but just with lava instead of water. Okay. Um, And, uh, but there's like, kind of like secrets on some of the levels. There's random chests that'll be on the map. If in like these, like hard to get to locations. Uh, so kind of rewards you for like checking the corners and and exploring. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I want to know about the melee attacks. Uh, are there melee attacks and do you use your pincers? Uh, yes. So the F key is melee. The G key is grenade. And there are upgrades for both those abilities uh, in addition to shooting. So there's like upgrades that give you a better range of your melee, or there's there's a lot of different upgrades for your grenades that you can use. Um, I have not gotten as well versed in using those as I have just shooting stuff and and getting perks around that. But in the higher difficulties, you kind of have to be proficient with everything. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, kind of a fun uh, emergent mechanic is when you're playing multiplayer is if everyone dies and there's one person left, uh, they have to kill everyone like in the arena and everyone will respawn and get a chest. But if they don't, then the run's over. So there's this like pressure where it's like, you're the last one alive. You're the last one alive. Like people will be telling you this. And it's like, all right, <laughs> better not fuck <laughs> up here. But um, yeah, yeah, it's a good time. It's very wacky and it's fun early access shenanigans right now. So. It's a shame the meme has locked them into needing to use crabs because if they were going to make a shooter, a pistol shrimp would be much better fit. Oh, mm. God. I think take my money. I mean, I th- what if the crab is dual wielding pistol shrimp? Mm. Now that, th- that, that feels like a labor violation. I think this this developer is a crab first uh, design <laughs> oriented. So <laughs> they, they promise a crab first experience. Yeah, I mean we will all eventually evolve into crabs. So hmm. carcinization, I, look it up. Since he made the original video in Unity, I wonder if he just like already had these assets like locked and loaded, and it's just like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean a non pun answer to this or response. Like this feels much better thought out than a meme game ought to be. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, slap some crabs on risky rain and you're good to go. <laughs> Let them ride. Nice. <laughs> Crab champions. Who'd have thought? Um, I- I'm going to go and do mine. Cause I, I mean, going from jank to jank. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Jank so recognize jank, baby. It does. Uh, just today, uh, the studio uh, behind Octodad and Bug Snacks, a studio called Young Horses, uh, has released uh, a jam thing. Is probably the wrong way to say it. They've they've put out something that they're calling the uh, the Free Range Collection. Uh, it is they, they they put out four kind of like small little just kind of stunt games. Uh, that they that their studio the people working there had kind of created while they were not making 
Octodad and Bug Sacks, just kind of their experiments that they that they've been making. So it's mm. these four little uh, I mean, trifles. Like I I I I got to them all in about a half hour, you know. But so, <laughs> and all of them are themed around animals, of of, of course. Um, but but uh, crabs? No, no crabs. No. Sorry, crabs. not interested. Uh, there is something called Snake Date. <laughs> oh, huh, I'm interested. <laughs> yeah, uh, where <laughs> you are a snake in a bar, and you've got something called uh, oh gosh, I forget what you, what, what it's called. What the name? What the name of the uh, uh, app is? Um, uh, uh, s- sniffer or something like that. Uh, charmer. There we go. Snake charmer. Right. Ah. Uh, it's a, it's a club that is full of horses, and you will get a little ding on your phone, and you will accept the date or not. Um, you accept it and it lays out like how many points you're going to get. You're a snake where you start in the center, but it plays a little bit like snake rules where the, where, uh, the long you get longer as you move. So you're just kind of trailing yourself around. And the idea is you need to find the horse in the club and then encircle that horse as many times as the uh, little indicator says in order to get the points and then move on to the, to move on to the next one. So it's kind of like uh, that old, the, the, that PS3 game that the creator of uh, Katamari made, Nobi Nobi Boy, a little oh, bit, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, where you're playing the monster that got longer and longer in this little open world kind of thing. But it is just a snake going around with the worst physics overlapping itself and, you know, flipping and flopping around as it tries to encircle horses. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and so presumably the horses signed up for the dating app. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean that's that's definitely someone's fetish. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, if <laughs> whole section of it. Yeah. And if it, and if it wasn't before, now it might be. <laughs> <laughs> I think I understand the games that this company makes now is just somebody's fetish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, d- 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 that was going to be the the publisher name, but uh, two on the nose. <laughs> Somebody. Yeah, Bug Snacks has some pretty gnarly like transformation stuff. Uh, <laughs> Octodad, had any number of things going on there. Uh, you know, uh, tentacles, obviously, but also chicken booification. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But I mean, like it's it's kind of at least from the Octodad point point of it, like their entire thing has been goofy physics games, like literally, like I, I don't want to call them gimmicks, but it's like goofy physics stunts kind of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the one of them that they put out that this feels a little bit like cheating, but it's also fun to see is Octodad Student Edition. And I and I was playing it. I was like, this is this is a pretty good like emulation of what a student game would be, right? It's like, it's like they did a student game demake of Octodad. No, this is just what they made, like what these people made when they were students before the studio was even a studio. So you get to see wow. that. All, all of these are free, by the way, right? Is this on itch.io oh, nice. or? Oh, it's Steam. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll uh, plop something into the chat here so it's easier to find. They don't make it easy to find right now. Yeah. I was just looking at their Steam page and they do not have it listed as one of their games. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to go to like a developer page, like, I don't know, Young, young Horses, Free Range. The other, the other two have to do with ants. There is Independent and Ant Ambassador. Uh, independent. I approve. <laughs> independent is a little bit uh, like I, uh, you know, I didn't have a lot of fun with that one just because it's pretty clear that it is an Unreal Engine five, just kind of like some monkeying around. It's like now open- you're just being a pedant. <laughs> uh it just it it wasn't as physics stunty you're playing an ant who has gotten loose from the uh like your colony has gotten loose from the ant farm and you're going around trying to uh uh uh, gather up uh cheerios which they give another name uh and use them to trade with the wild ants who are living in the house there uh and it's unreal engine 5 um graphics and then the main thing you do is like pick stuff up and throw it but otherwise it just kind of plays like a physics platformer kind of thing 3d physics platformer wasn't as charmed by that as i was by ambassador 
<laughs> this is a very short game. You are playing as a hand where one finger has a little top hat on it and a little smiley face on it. And the the game progresses from right to left as you are controlling this hand and the finger just kind of dangles limply. Um, and you have to like proceed along this medieval ant kingdom uh, doing little quests that happen to pop up along the way that are based around the physics of this limp finger that you only have the ability to either let dangle or when you press the button, it'll do like a, it'll curl up, you know, kind of deal. So like to pull switches and stuff. Hmm. <laughs> uh, but like, you've got to do these quests with these incredibly, um, with these incredibly uh, janky physics uh, without crushing the ants, a- 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 except until you get to a duel where the ant challenges you to a fight for your honor, because you're trying to marry into the kingdom of ants to seal a, to, to, to seal a, a, a blood pact between uh, the, the hands <laughs> and the ants. Then you have to crush the ant. Uh, and is that as easy as it sounds oh it's pretty easy yeah (laughs) (laughs) but it is like super short incredibly goofy but almost exactly what i want again from physics-based little stunt game from a studio that makes physics-based stunt games about animals uh it's incredibly funny and worth the free and the 10 minutes it will take you to play it (laughs) very cool yeah so like I ran through those pretty quick, but like each of them is fucking nothing, but they are fun in the sense of joke games, you know, and like, I don't know, I would pay five, ten dollars for a three hour ambassador experience, you know, <laughs> maybe they explored that idea as much as they could. You know, but tell me about the ambassador verse. <laughs> <laughs> I want to solve more puzzles like this. Maybe there could be, you know, little different interactions, but like it's super goofy and cool. Nice. Yes. I mean, that, that is, that is their wheelhouse, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I was really excited to see that those kind of came across and I was like, I bet you I could play those on the day they come out and talk about them on the level. And I did because Damn. The only other thing I had to talk about was Crisis Core, but I've said everything that I need to say about that. I beat it. Uh, boy, is that a prequel to Final Fantasy VII? <laughs> Were you able to play Resident Evil on Saturday, by the way? I was, yeah. Right. My my internet was a dick on Friday. Um, yes. Did oh, you ever be uh, sorry we're open or whatever? No, I'm g- I'm gonna go back to it and finish it up. I uh, you know the weeks off for travel and then RE4. Oh kinda, yeah, I forgot yeah. that that synced up that way. Yeah, yeah. So that's all I got. Any questions about the uh, the free range label collection? Uh, uh, maybe maybe repeat how to find it on Steam since it is hard to find. Uh, what I would say is the easiest one to remember is just go onto Steam and do a search for Snake Date, all one word, um, and then click on the uh, 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 on the page there. Click on the Young Horses Free Range and the developer, and then you'll see a list of all four of them. And maybe they will have gotten their shit together by the time uh, by, by the time you hear this, and it'll be easier to, to search. Now, out. I, I don't want to play these games if they got their shit together. I'm here for the jank. <laughs> I think the jank will be untouched. It yeah, will I, not be affected by discoverability. I just immediately saw the word naked and snake date. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No, it is right in there. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, that's me. Uh, let's see here. David, how about you? Yeah, so I've actually got a new one. I picked up uh, Shardpunk Verminfall. What? What? Bless you. (laughs) Yes, exactly. So this is uh, basically what you would get if you um, mashed up uh, Vermintide, uh, Darkest Dungeon, maybe a little bit of FTL, and XCOM. So the Go idea on. the idea is that a group of um a a vast horde of rat people has um you know overrun uh humanity and has you know breached the defenses of the capital city and you have to get this automaton 
to the um oh to the i guess the capitol building or something uh so you know kind of in a uh ftl type thing you know you've got a map and i think in this case you can only go forward but kind of the story can see is you're trying to stay ahead of the horde mm-hmm. yeah you go um, no, node to node yeah right exactly but um you know, the actual combat is XCOM style, you know, turn-based, uh, you know, half cover, full cover, Overwatch, you know, all that shit. Okay. Um, the only thing is when you, um, it's, I guess you could also throw in a little bit of uh, Left for Dead because what you're trying to do is basically each um, each map, each node of, you know, the overworld map, you are trying to get to the next uh, bunker, which you know sort of uh, works like the you know in between bunkers and Left for Dead. Mm-hmm. And as you're doing that, you know you're taking damage. You're also taking stress damage, huh. and uh, you know based on like the first time you see an enemy, or if you suffer a critical hit, or you know things like that. And if your stress gets too high you can, um, you know, develop negative traits. <laughs> okay. And then when you get to the bunker, uh, similar to the campfire in Darkest Dungeon, uh, you have, you know, a certain number of uh, points that you, the various characters can use to, like, heal or, you know, use special abilities, like, you know, I don't know, giving a uh, pep talk to lower everyone's stress or, uh, you know, zeroing in their uh guns so that it does more damage the next map things like that the whole thing is wrapped up in a um roguelike uh so you know it's designed to do multiple runs and um you know when you die you know when your party gets wiped out or if the automaton that's coming with you gets killed uh it's game over you start over at the beginning. However, by completing achievements, you can uh, you know unlock new things. So, is there any genre that this game is not? <laughs> I not that I have found yet. <laughs> I I'm sure any missing genres will be fixed in the um, in the DLC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised this is like, this isn't early access at least not currently. No. Um, yeah, oh, it's just out. Yep. yep. Yeah. Who does that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the done thing, and out very recently as as well. I, like I mean, the concept just the concept for the game and the concept for the name sound kind of the same, which is I, I don't know, man, just everything. Uh, yeah. It's, so I would. Oh God. No, but but I was gonna like I was gonna say like like none of these things sound contradictory to each other, and like the video that I'm seeing looks pretty rad, actually. So, like, does this hang together? Like, is this is is this good? Yeah, I think what it what it all comes together to mean is basically it's XCOM with a greater um, greater emphasis on like attrition be- between battles. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um. So why why the other things is like in order to heal or craft grenades, uh, you know, things like that, you have to, um, you have to search in marked areas on the map. Mm -hmm. And then you get, you know, like scraps and medical supplies of food, stuff like that. So, you know, you also have, um, limited resources and it's very much, you don't have to kill everything. You just have to get to the next, um, you know, the next bunker. So yeah, it's kind of, I would say an XCOM that focuses much more on, you know, managing, you know, resources and much more on keeping on the move. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested by just the hordes of rats that are on screen at once. Cause that's like, you know, a bunch of enemies does not usually lend itself very well to a turn-based strategy game. Mm-hmm. Um, particularly, you know, XCOM two did some stuff with the horde in, uh, the, the expansion 
And it, it just led to a lot of turns where you, you feel like you're just waiting and waiting and waiting for every enemy to take their turn. So how, how does it handle that? And like, do your, do your soldiers skills kind of correspond to the fact that you're fighting hordes more than, than individual foes? Yeah. So it's hard to know how much of it is like just, you know, me falling into the strategies that I like from XCOM but I've been building very heavily around Overwatch. Okay. And you can get things... Uh, one, one of the unique mechanics is this is very much a steampunk world. So instead of instead of your weapons having ammunition, they build up heat. And then once their uh, heat is completely full, you can either vent them or you can just keep shooting, but you'll do damage to yourself as well. Oh, cool. Um, but there's a whole bunch of abilities that um, either give you free shots or like uh, my current automaton, uh, its special ability is any character that's next to them doesn't build up heat. Mm -hmm. And so you can do things where I think like my sniper on a full on a full round um, Overwatch gets like four Overwatch shots, and each of them is enough to take on or take down like most common enemies. <clears throat> nice. Uh, similarly, I have a character that um, ha is a katana specialist, and uh, her ability is basically she can. Um, sort of get a free movement action that ends a melee attack. And then uh, one of her level abilities you can level up over time. Basically, when you kill an enemy with that, it refunds your action points, but decreases the your move distance by two. So you can basically, you know, build her to just be able to, like, run back and forth between a group of enemies and take everyone out. Nice, yeah. And much more relevant when you are more frequently encountering large groups of enemies. Right, exactly. Uh, the other thing they have is uh, the super rare consumable are fusion cores, which you can use to uh, revive your uh, automaton if it gets uh, taken out, and also um, to uh, basically instantly make uh, horde timers um and so like at the end of the level, it takes uh, several rounds for the bunker to open up, or you can just use a um, fusion core. However, you can also use it to basically uh, just like open it up and more or less force lightnings like a whole crowd of enemies. <laughs> nice. So yeah, so there, there definitely are things like that. It feels to me like it, like the abilities are... I guess kind of scale much higher, particularly in terms of like raw number of attacks, things like that. Does that make turns just take forever to play out or is it still pretty snappy? Um, still seems pretty snappy. Um, you can basically do two, you know, two, two actions, uh, you know, either two attacks, two moves or whatever. And a lot of the rest of the stuff happens, uh, you know, at least semi-automatically. So at least so far, I haven't had much slowdown. That could change as I get farther into the game, though. Mm. The, um, uh, go on. Since, since it says it's like an RPG, what what's like the progression like for the individual characters? Like, how do you upgrade them? Yeah, so you basically... Um, you know, the characters gain levels, um, they get a certain amount of experience each mission, you know, each combat, and then some bonus experience if they got the most kills, and some bonus experience if they got the most, uh, uh loots. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, it's fairly basic in terms of that, but then when they level up, they gain a point of hit points, and then also get a, um skill upgrade and each skill can be upgraded like three times or something like that hmm. so um and you know if you die all, all of that resets however um you know the actual 
unlocking of those skills and things like that stays. Okay. Uh, there's also a whole bunch of things where uh, performing certain actions uh, results in what they call like combat tactics. So, for example, if uh, two characters are side by side and go into Overwatch mode, they will both get plus 20% hit. Like they're uh, covering one another or something? Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. So, or they can't be outdone by the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or similarly, uh, like if two enemies, um, or if two characters, um, hunker down so like go full defensive next to each other they'll heal a little bit of stress um those are the main ones i've unlocked so far i it's implied that there's one for i think if you like revive an enemy and then immediately have them get a kill um you know things like that so yeah there's there's a lot in the game um but yeah uh the the last thing i'd say is that all of the characters are, um, there's not, you know, I guess classes so much as there's different characters. So each, each member of your team has completely different, um, abilities, which is kind of cool. But it's, it's kind of like open-ended, which like stats you want to upgrade, but like their abilities make it more that one's conducive to. Well, so, so the stats you can upgrade are completely different. So, um, Oh, so, okay. like, the Katana um, uh, specialist has abilities that, um, has that ability that basically gives them extra attacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, likewise, they get movement abilities, whereas there's a character that's a, uh, like, a military veteran uh, who is better at, like, finding ammo stockpiles. Uh, there's a character that's kind of your leader ability and he gets a whole bunch of um party buffs gotcha so Uh, you're you're only upgrading like skills there's not like like strength or defense or anything like that that you're upgrading no not usually um you know some of the skills end up just being like you know i don't know plus one two hp or things like that Mm. but for the most part no they're mostly active okay um, it's very, it's a kind of a, a, a small numbers, um, game. You start most characters with like five HP and this is just an estimate from like the types of bonuses I've seen around. It looks to me like probably the max you could get on a character if you just, you know, had everything going for him is probably in the neighborhood of 20 HP. Okay. So, so yeah, you know, it's, uh, that makes it very easy to die. Hmm. But yeah, yeah, it's really cool game. Really, really well, uh, animated. Uh, my, my only complaint is that, uh, from the name Verminfall, it is not in fact a game about, uh, you know, just rats raining from the sky. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) But, um, I've decided that I kind of really don't like the name. (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's is it the shard punk or the vermin fall I, I, like, like, the, like the whole thing it just like what david is describing sounds cooler than the name would allow for it the name sounds like a gag to me yeah what i wonder is one of the items you one of the resources you pick up is shards Mm-hmm. And uh, the main thing I found you can use them for, maybe the only thing, is to craft um, grenades. I kind of wonder if at some point they thought, you know, planned on like the technology and stuff like that revolving around that more heavily. Yeah. And then just the name stuck, even though the kind of world building went somewhere else. Right. See, I I think it, it is a situation where like someone on the dev team has a 600 page manuscript on the world building for Shard Punk, and they've got a whole idea of it being this, um, you know, uh, 
what is what is the word for it? Marvel's uh, shared universe or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is the first entry in it. And so it, it, it started, they've been on it so long it's made sense to them. They just don't realize that it doesn't make sense to anyone else. It's a little that's conspiratorial. Head, little, little that's conspiratorial. My, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's basically what we do, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. I like the idea of vermin fall being like the first stage. Then you get like a vermin flood and then you get vermin tides at the end. Hmm. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I, I thought maybe like Vermin Fall was the first one that's Vermin Winter, then Vermin Spring. Mm, okay. Huh. Well, I had never heard about this game before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least so far, I hi- highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. And it's like 12 bucks. Yeah. That sounds like there's a lot there. Mm hmm. Nice. Yeah, Shard Tide, Vermin Punk. No? Exactly. Shard, Shard, Shard Punk, ver- Vermin Tide. People like when we say the name at the end of the thing. <laughs> That's what I said. Tide Punk Verminfall. <sighs> do you have anything else, David? Uh, no, I do not. Although I do have a game I want to uh, pitch to you that I think you should uh, consider check out. Have you seen Shadows of Doubt? Yeah, I am. Uh, that's on my short list uh, to uh, uh, stream the next time I do an on horror stream. Yeah, nice procedural yeah. open world mystery game. Yep, uh, like uh, Deus Ex style. Yep, yep. Looks rad. Just came out like today or yesterday or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good catch though. Um, nice, uh, Dennis. Round us out. What you, what you been playing? Yeah, so uh, DMZ is dead to me. <laughs> uh, it I was be. gone one week. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh man they they basically released a uh, pay to win skin and data leaked on a series of progressively worse pay to win skins. Oh no! Um, yeah, so my one bit of catharsis is that um, the some of the new stuff that they introduced in season three that, you know, I, I was on record being like, okay, season three looks pretty cool. And then they did the pay to win thing. Some of the stuff they released in season three is getting abused by the player base to make the game like way more hostile. Mm. Um, and when the UAV uh, pay to win skin releases, it's going to make that uh, exponentially worse. And so it's like, man, like this, this, these pay to win skins are going to ruin the game so hard that just the anticipation of them showing up um, and like these, these other seemingly unrelated changes are ruining the game. So no. um, happy, happy to be out on it right now. Uh, maybe they'll get it back to a playable state. Uh, maybe they'll get it, you know, get it back to a healthy place. I don't know. Um, but in that void, I had to insert some triple a forever shooter um with a did questionable you? company behind it <laughs> well, i did if i wanted to hang out with my buddy that i played dmz with okay you know? okay yeah there uh, we go. That, that <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a dmz shaped hole in his heart right now yes and uh and my See friend was filling it <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry no he's gonna pop a uav when i get close <laughs> um that's dumb uh so anyway my, my buddy was playing destiny 2 and convinced me to oh. go back to it yeah, um, and and this is a different game than I played at launch. When was yep. the last time you played it? At launch. Oh, uh, yeah. So I I was the sucker that um, you know saw Destiny getting into a pretty good place uh, when they were going to launch Destiny Two, and was like, oh, well, they probably worked out all the kinks with Destiny, and Destiny Two will launch in great shape, and this can just be my forever shooter. Um, so I bought the eighty dollar deluxe version um, with all the special stuff and the next two DLCs and, and yada yada. Um, and they, they did not launch in excellent shape. They had no idea what the hell, um, to do with the game. Uh, and it was kind of a big nothing burger. Like there really was not much to do in the original destiny Two. So, um, I felt really jilted, uh, the, the two expansions were even emptier than the main game. Mm. And then the, you know, the, the third expansion onward where they kind of started to figure themselves out. Uh, I didn't, I didn't get those cause I didn't pay for it. Uh, apparently I should have gotten the, the $120 version instead of the $80 <laughs> version or whatever. Yeah. So, so I, I felt very jilted. I walked away from destiny two, um, for a long time, a ton of changes have happened since, um, they, <laughs> I think all of the content that I had 
paid for is either free to play or just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah, I got seasoned like, out. They uh they they got me bad. Um but the new stuff uh is built on the same mechanics that the old stuff was and a bungee shooter is still going to be a bungee shooter. Mm-hmm. So, um, so this, this game just feels good to play. So what is the pitch for this season? Um, Neptunian fuckboy. boy. Okay. Uh, I, I not, not quite sure. Although I think the character is, is non-binary, but I guess there's, there's a whole bunch of proper nouns that I don't recognize. Um, that are fighting each other. <laughs> You're playing Destiny, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is peak Destiny. Yeah, and, and I haven't followed the story at all since launch. Um, so there's, you know, there's six factions that I've never heard of before, and all of them have like seven or eight, um, you know, names that they're dropping that feel like oh, that felt oh, like it was yeah. a big reveal. Yeah, like all a full half the bad guys are good guys now. Yeah, like what? Um, and, and they decide they want to race to Neptune to, um, get some MacGuffin. So, you know, you go to Neptune and there is a fully developed city and society living on Neptune that no one was aware of, uh, how that works when everyone is zipping around the galaxy, like, uh, like it's no big deal. I don't know. Um, but the, the people on Neptune are all like giant sized, um, and all very scantily clad and jovial. So, um, you know, it, it is like, uh, the Asgard of destiny <laughs> and, uh, it is, yeah, that I, I could not tell you what's going on beyond that. Um, but you know, there, there's the intro mission. So like the, the mission it drops you into at the start is the same one that I remember from before. Um, and, and, you know, it kind of eases you in as a side uh, note, is oh, it grow you're talking about? No, uh, Nessus, Ness, uh, yeah, maybe Nessus. I mean, yeah, that, that, I don't know. Let me see. This, I think his name is Nessus. My, 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 my rule with destiny is, uh, that, you know, it is, it has hurt me a lot that I ha- now have to pretend that I don't care a great deal about the storyline. <laughs> No, okay, so Nessus is a planet. Again, so many proper nouns. You're 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 up on your microphone quite close, but Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about in. destiny, uh, right? Just, how? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I don't yeah. I, I need yeah, that's that's uh, not cool of me. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um so yeah, it, it's I don't know what's going on with the story. It is fun shooting. Um it's fun to run around with a buddy. I basically the campaign is gone. Like there's a very short tutorial on ramp and then it's straight into kind of like all the weekly quest kind of stuff, um, which it, you know, it, it gives you an excuse to zip around and try all the different corners of the game um, because you can get special rewards. If you, if you do a couple things in multiplayer, if you do a couple things in uh, the raid ish stuff. If you do a couple things in random patrols um, and it always feels like you're building towards something. Um, and so, yeah, it's really easy to hop on with a buddy and he's like, Hey, I've I got, I got a bunch of requests for scout rifles. And you're like, well, great. I got to do a raid. And so you hop into a raid with scout rifles equipped and go to town. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's, it, it is a, it's been a good way to, you know, excuse to hang out with someone in chat while you're, where you're shooting aliens. Have they got you doing any interesting, cool, or new stuff compared to when you played it at launch, like mission types or, you know, more involved kinds of enemies, uh, things like that, like outside of like raid stuff, which is, I know the way that this generally articulates, like that's where they, any game like this hides their cool stuff. Yeah. Nope. Oh. Not, not even slightly. <laughs> you know, there's 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 new factions that you're fighting against. There are technically like new weapon types, but it's all the same stuff. You know, like it, it's it's point and shoot, and uh, then do that again. I guess. <laughs> I mean, the previous season added like pirate treasure hunts on spaceships. Oh, sorry, when I say spaceships, I mean literally ships in space. Okay. I yeah, I haven't seen that yet. So maybe uh, maybe there's some stuff I still haven't uncovered. Uh, the the one the one notable new thing is Gambit mode, and that wasn't around. Yes, Mon Cher. Yeah, uh, what? I, I, oh, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gambit like, from like Gambit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
We're working real hard to get each other's jokes this week. <laughs> it's a real. We're making it. We're making it sound I, hard. Also, I love that you drop into a game and within five minutes find the PVEVP uh, yeah. mode. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so that's what it is, is like you, you're you on a team of four, there's another team of four, you're both clearing your various arenas of AI bots, um, and you know the, when the enemies die, they drop these moats that you can deposit in a bank. Uh, Dr. Mario style, that if you deposit enough at once, it will drop, you know, uh, tough enemies on the other team. Huh. Uh, You also then at intervals can jump through a portal into the other team's area and shoot them up to try to distract them or, or, you know, steal their moats, et cetera. Um, And then, you know, uh, at the end of it, you summon a big boss and you race to kill the boss before the other team can summon and kill their boss. Um, So yeah, a really, really cool kind of less direct uh, multiplayer experience. I, Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. It feels to me like there's a ton of rubber banding in it, though. Mm. Um, so, you know, one one team will get the boss up way ahead of the other team. Mm. But then the, the team that's behind seems to get easier enemies or, you know, maybe because the, the leading team is fighting the boss and not sending uh, blocker enemies over anymore. It's easier to finish up. But it just it just always feels like no matter how the early game goes, you wind up kind of neck and neck at the end. Um, and then, and then it's kind of, I don't know, feels a bit like a coin flip at the end, just because everyone winds up close. Yeah. So I, I see the design intent there, which is like, Hey, you can always come back. Like it always feels close and exciting. Um, but when it's so manufactured to be that way, it loses a bit of its sheen. Like I want to be able to blow someone out in this game and I haven't been able to yet. Yeah. You get Um, that Mario Kart flattening that goes mm -hmm. on. Mm Mm-hmm. But man, does it feel good to to invade the other team's space and to take out, you know, the entire team before jumping back? Like, <laughs> it's it's got its own kind of hero moments mm-hmm. uh, to it. But yeah, it it is the PvP VE mode of Destiny. Yeah. What do you, what do you think of the the Drifter? Oh man, nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, he's just a little too uh, cowboy for me. Uh. Yeah, he's like, Rad man, let's see you have a flip a coin and see who's there. Arr. You know. See, I love his interactions with uh Eris Morn are really funny. Oh, that would require me to know who that was. Uh, or what that the, was? Where that is? That's the uh the Gothy uh space witch. Okay. Ba- ba- basically, hit him and the like most emo, uh, emo, uh, serious character in the game, uh, kind of have a, uh, uh, a, uh, shipping thing going on. Okay. Okay. I don't know if he, if he, if he didn't sound so much like Dr. Teeth from, uh, the Muppets, <laughs> maybe I could like him. Yeah. I, I can see that. I can see that. Hmm. Yeah, I got no more questions about Destiny. Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, it, it's filling the DMZ hole in my heart and allowing me to hang out with the the friends that you know I'll, I'll derp around with in a game. Yeah, uh, yeah, just to hang out. So, so that's so, fine. social activity. I get it. Yeah, uh, another game that I've turned into a social activity though. Um, I have an update on Slay the Spire. Ooh. Oh, uh, specifically the Slay by Comment run that I've been doing on Reddit, where. You know, every day I, I post where I'm at in the game and then uh, whatever comment is most upvoted is the action that I take. OK, um, this has been going on now for 130 days just for this run. Wow. Uh, it's close to 200 days when you factor in like the previous run, which, uh-huh. I, which uh, I died in. And we have reached the final, final boss. So we've gotten Ooh. through act four and are on the heart. Wow. Uh, for anyone familiar with it. Yes. The stakes are high. What's the stakes? Build? Uh, it is a corruption ironclad build. Okay. Uh, we lucked into ice cream uh, late in the game, which mm-hmm. lets you keep your mana turn over turn. Mm-hmm. Um, and so basically the deck is designed to um, power up while exhausting all the cards that are powering you up. And until you're left with just one or two really strong attacks that you can then just spam for massive damage. Okay. 
Um, and it, it does that very effectively to the point that the heart, which is notably like a, a challenge boss um, and infamously difficult, um, there the discussions right now are like, what is the meme way we're going to kill this? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the like the that community is firmly in control of the battle. Um, we're trying to perfect it so take no damage whatsoever. Um, and people are like, oh, I, I don't know. We might only be able to finish with full health after healing back up uh, <laughs> rather than just never take damage in the first place. I don't know if we can do this. Like that's that's the level of overpowered we've gotten to. That's that's pretty confident from like a play by post point of view. Yeah. I mean, the co- the, the community that has coalesced around uh, this run is incredible. And, you know, it, it makes sense. Like this forum is, is where some of the better players uh, hang out. Yeah, uh, yeah, and they are given a day to analyze the best possible move. Okay, um, okay, for everyone. So la- last run with the defect, um, I think people were kind of like, "Oh, this is jokey, Mimi," like not taking it seriously, and so we got killed. But then I think p- by that point, people started to realize, like, "Oh, oh, he's actually going to like stick around and post this every day." Okay, all right, let's yeah, okay, let's do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, they've been absolutely raffle stomping uh, the the uh, enemies. Hmm. So yeah, I, I think uh, there's a line on the table now. Oh, the, so there's a relic that we found in both runs called Frozen Eye that lets you see your draw pile in order. Mm-hmm. Um, and that alone has cut the time oh. for this run in half. Oh, I would have thought that it would expand it, actually. It, it, normally it does. So normal players, it's like, I could take Frozen Eye. I know it's powerful because I have perfect information now but I don't want to spend that long on it when you literally have a full day to analyze every single move. Right. Um, okay. You can like, it's, it's super helpful. It almost passes like a, like a static friction point or something like yes. that. <laughs> yeah. So can you do um, multiple turns in a row then with that? Sometimes. Uh, yeah. If there's a reshuffle, you kind of have to stop. If there's randomness to the enemy's attack pattern, which yeah. sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't, uh, you have to stop and see what happens with that randomness. Um, and then there's other things like if you have status cards inserted into the deck, that'll change the draw order. Mm. Um, it's kind of incredible. Like people who make recommendations will occasionally use like conditional, like if then branches and stuff. But for the most part, the community has been really good about just keeping it simple and, and straightforward lines. Uh, and if there's a, a big decision point, uh, we'll kind of break for the day and and see what comes next. Mm. Have there been um, any like controversies in the run where it's like half the people want to do one thing and the other half want to do a different thing? Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think of specific examples. Um, the, the interesting thing is um, because like something posted earlier in the day gets more views and potentially more upvotes, then there's a bit of this race that happens where like there will be one most popular line and then someone will be like, Oh my God, I calculated out to the thousandth percent and this is slightly better. Like we can, we can save our buffer here or we, we uh, you know, don't have to use a potion this turn if we do X, Y, and Z. And then there's this like giant push from the here. Like everyone go up with this other line. Down the line. <laughs> um, Top post they're pretty- edit it and be like upvote this instead (laughs) yeah well i had to put rules in place around edits like Mm. you can't you you can edit to clarify but if you change something you have to make it a new comment and you can edit your old comment to link to the new comment right you can't you can't delete the original comment nice Uh, because you know people might vote for that earnestly wanting it and uh and be mad but uh, people have been so cool about this um anyway the the current uh options on the table for winning um that people are deciding between uh, are there's a, a card called clash, which is kind of uh, considered the noob trap card. So it's a, it's a strong attack, but you can only play it if you only have attacks in your hand and the further you get in the game, the less likely that is. And so it's a game that you take early on. It's like, Oh, this is powerful. And then it winds up just being a dead card, uh, towards the end of the game. Um, they, uh, someone in the community convinced everyone to take that for our deck and it's actually been kind of MVP. Like it's done really well. Um, and so I'm very proud that we're kind of technically we are winning with a meme deck. Um, and uh, one line literally plays that card, I think five or six times in a row to win. Huh? Um, and just, we have so much HP at this point, we can tank the hits and just like, I'm going to kill you with clash and clash only. Um, and then the other one is there's a card called feed, um, which if you kill an enemy with it, you get some extra max HP. Um, and every time that I have, every time that the community has played feed, 
I have um, uh, written like a little review of what the enemy tastes like. Uh, so there is we we have a head chef um, <laughs> that uh, that has has uh, done a tier list of everything uh, and keeps a record of it. Uh, they also became our chief justice because we needed a, a supreme court. Uh, don't ask <laughs> to enforce the laws of slay by comment. Um, and so they are the the head chief slash chef justice. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's a, a whole thing, but we could play feed to kill the heart. Uh, and that would also be fun because then I would write up what it tastes like. Yeah. So, yeah, I, it, it's been a delight. I'm definitely going to do um, a third run. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. It, it seems like there's appetite for it in the community. And if the final instruction says start a new run, I will start a new run. Ah, yes. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, you could always jump to like a monster train or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just randomly start posting from a different game. <laughs> <laughs> Get immediately scuttled by the mods. Mm-hmm. Actually, so, so um, there's another person that does a daily post that's just like a discussion thread for every card. And they're going through alphabetically the whole list of cards. Mm-hmm. So for April Fool's Day, um, I did their post and they did my post. Oh, yeah. Nice. So that was fun. Like, it's just, it's a really cool community and uh, I'm, I'm so happy that it's gone so well. Nice. Yeah. So uh, we are by this time next week, I think I'll be able to report on actually winning our first run of Slay by Comment. Hmm. <laughs> well, congratulations. Prematurely. Okay. The fact uh, that- I, I don't think we can lose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you've got enough firepower on your side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. Nice. Famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking on my desk here. Uh, you got anything else? No, that's uh, that's the big stuff. All right. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you a question and then uh, you answer. Uh, Dennis, what is the question that you asked the nice people? I asked them about uh, good vibes after my DMZ meltdown last week. I, I want to know... What is the best example of a developer actually listening to its players and making changes accordingly? Yeah, I'll get started with. Oh, uh, so you're not talking about the uh, the good touch from uh, uh, Borderlands Two? Who? What? What? Never. Do I have to cut this out? <laughs> I, I don't know what this is. Neither. Okay. I'm scared. I'm yeah. scared. That there, is the theme there, of this there week's was episode. A, there, there was a gun in Borderlands 2 uh, called the Good Touch that uh, just makes your, um, uh, as long as you have it equipped, your uh, controller's rumble feature just goes constantly. <laughs> oh, oh my okay. God. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I will uh, start us off here with uh, with Jeremy, who says it's not really a game related, but the game adaptation of a video game for movies or series uh, game adaptations of video games or movies uh, have been getting a lot better, getting a lot better over the years. Sonic, Mario and The Last of Us, much better than the old Mario movie, for example. I haven't seen the, the old I haven't seen the new Mario movie, but nothing will make the old Mario movie obsolete. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I note that you didn't say nothing will make the old Mario movie bad. I when, I, I would I yeah no nothing will make the old Mario movie bad. It's a it's oh, a wow. good it's a good it's a good movie. When yeah. the movie okay. is released obsolete, you cannot make it obsolete. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I was born in the dark. I'm a I am a defender of the OG Mario movie. Yeah, it, I mean they took a big swing with it. It's uh-huh, respectable yeah. in that sense. Yeah. I, I, I've got to say, though, I didn't consider this angle, but I've got to agree. I know I definitely feel that way about like, the D&D movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and, and think about the, the Sonic movie where they completely redid the character. Like that, that was. Uh... Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up as like a like a solid example of this is like mm-hmm. instead of doubling down on a backlash or whatever, they, you know, went in with it. Although that that original model, like what a ballsy move it would be to release a movie with that fucking thing in those teeth as the he's, lead he's in the live action chippendale movie yeah it's gonna say <laughs> they make an Which alternate is- sonic horror movie with that model <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> gotta go fast <laughs> uh <laughs> let's see here ben what does peter say peter says this one feels like a gimme but elden ring is the first from soft game that i've actually played from release onwards Uh, However, based on everything I've seen, uh, the repeated patches and balancing has been amazing. Uh, Everything from the changes to the Sword of the Night, uh, or Sword of Night, 
and flame ice rind hatchet to the rise and fall of rivers of blood and so on. This is really good. In fact, I think the biggest like version of this is something that is really wonky and hard to appreciate if you're not in it. Uh, prior to Elden Ring and even early on in Elden Ring's release, uh, FromSoft's, uh, FromSoft was kind of doing this eternal balancing act of balancing the game and making changes to weapons that were overpowered or underpowered in PvP uh, with kind of no mind to what this would do for like, I don't know the one or two weapons that were especially viable for uh, people who are just playing PVE, you know, Mm -hmm. and Elden ring, they made, they, they split it. And so there are just different stats and different adjustments that are made for PVP or for PVE. And that is 100% the way that it ought to go. Uh, That way everybody gets what they want. I hate PVP in Souls games so very much. Yeah, but there are lots of people who don't. And yeah, I really, there's I'm, a lot of psychopaths and, 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 in and the world. I, and I'm very happy that those people who like that thing are no longer affecting my PVE builds, you know, mm-hmm. making them suddenly like non viable in the middle of a run. Like, I just want to know who they are so that I can never turn my back on them. <laughs> uh, I mean, depending uh, on the Too latency. bad. Leg means you already have. Yes. <laughs> uh, David, what does David say? David says. Wizards of the Coast eventually backtracking on their OGL. It's not video g- games, but it's damn close. I listened to a ton of real play podcasts, and it was an interesting time listening to each of them backtracking on whether they were D and D or not, and several just changing to Pathfinder or other tabletop RPGs. One of my favorite details that came out of that was the Pathfinder company um, coming out with their own version of the OGL, calling it the ORC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so does that mean there's now a OG OGL? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's the it's the it's the o, 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 OGRE, the OG re-release. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. I yeah. I don't know. That that barely works. Man, did you see that? I didn't bring the story because I wanted to bring a more positive one. But did you see the uh, wizards hired the fucking Pinkertons to go to a YouTube career? Oh no, that's my story. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> well. Uh, Oops. Yeah, you 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 can never escape it, uh, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I will. Let's take that, strike that. Um, and uh, Dennis, I don't know. I thought it was funny. <laughs> strike Dennis. the swoop from the record. No, no, you, you strike can, the swoop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> At least that's decided. <laughs> Uh, oh god <laughs> um uh D- D- dennis what does keck just say oh uh, let me compose myself uh they say struggling on that one unfortunately uh, struggling on the question uh i can think of examples but they were just fine warframe might be the one of the best but i just know that from hearing players i don't play warframe why not david q yeah q, <laughs> q your your thoughts i Honestly, I'm I'm not aware of like times when Warframe has tried to do a thing and then massively changed. It just seems like Warframe more just kind of does whatever pops into their heads. Mm-hmm. But I I would not be surprised that um, if that was the case, and I I do think there were some pretty significant changes from like the first release. However, that was uh, before I really got into it. Fair enough. And I got, I, I, you know, I, I left it vague where it, not necessarily them revising things, but them, mm-hmm. you know, incorporating feedback. Uh, oh yeah. They the definitely beginning. do that. Mm-hmm. Also yeah. try Warframe. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and then I'll read the last one here. Sam says it's been discussed exhaustively on the level, uh, but I was playing no man's sky earlier today and I can't think of a better answer than that. They, they must have it into actually some man's sky. <laughs> <laughs> they must have like some kind of just like necromancer bone bag that occasionally fills up with money. <laughs> like their yeah. business model is baffling and should probably be investigated by the SEC. <laughs> I really like that. I think some of the plot line they eventually added though is just uh, like passive aggressively uh, referencing the um, 
the whole controversy. Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, that makes sense. Because there's there's a whole thing about like, oh, I gave you the universe and that was enough. You know, that yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> uh, looks into camera. They've they've they put in enough work to where they can work in a little uh, how you like me now kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. How, yeah, it, it, it's it's an interesting place to be mentally. It has to be uh, that you are eternally the poster child for like, hey, you were a massive fuck up, but you're pretty good now. It's it's kind of hard to to like to look at them, you know. Like nobody, whenever people talk about Final Fantasy fourteen, nobody talks about their fuck up of a launch, except. Mm-hmm in relation to how much they turned it around, you know, like that is not the stink that is, that is on them. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good. You know, if you do the work, you can work out of rep- reputational hole. It is, it is good to see that. I'm sure there are some weirdos cause there are always weirdos, but <laughs> it's the end. I mean, there's always weirdos. I'm going to be honest. I still haven't forgiven them. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> they still shipped a broken ass game. They did. A bunch Wait, of money. Are so, we talking about uh, no man's sky or final fantasy? Uh, I don't know Final Fantasy, but probably either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, No Man's Sky just think they, you know, shipped an existentially horrifying game. <laughs> Where you find there's nothing in the universe. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, for my example, I'm going to say the, um, uh, the Dark Picture anthology. Uh, super mm-hmm. massive, and this can extend to like uh, until dawn and uh, uh, the quarry because all these games are kind of existing in the same kind of kind of run uh, together. Like no two of them have handled QTEs in the same way. Like they are constantly trying to trying to like advance those things. Like it is a it is a studio that is kind of always got its ear to the ground when it comes to trying to refine how to make these, um, you know, cinematic adventure games based on horror tropes, right? Like it doesn't always move in the right direction. See my pervasive complaints about, Oh gosh. Uh, what is it? The devil in me the most mm-hmm. recent, you know, the most recent of the, uh, of the, uh, dark pictures anthology, but like, it's really good to see, uh, a studio, not just with a model that allows that kind of iteration, but one that, uh, you know, they're willing to use that flexibility. Right. Who uh, Ben, uh, how about you? Mine's hot off the presses and I'm saying this one, uh, so I don't, it doesn't bump into my news story, but, uh, the developers behind Storybook Brawl are finally listening to all the people who left the game, uh, who asked that they take a crypto out of the game. Uh, okay. They decided to improve the game by having it shut down at the beginning of May. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they just announced today that the game's going to shut down. Servers are going to shut down for it within a month. So. Huh. Is that because the company that owns them is FTX? Yeah. yeah. So sorry to the devs at the company. Rest in piss all the people who sold the game to FTX. Like, <laughs> yeah, they got their exit. I mean, they got yeah, their they, they, parachute. They cashed out. Yeah. yeah. Unless they kept it in crypto, in which case. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Lol. Yeah. Oh, that's shame on them. Um, yeah. That's all shame I, on them. I have since joined rejoined the Discord server to see like what the how the people are handling it. <laughs> Still a shit ton of crypto bros on that place, man. Fine. And, like, it's weird seeing toxic positivity in earnest. It's the, like, oh. This only this only failed because you guys didn't have faith in the project. Yeah. Yeah. Like, God, <laughs> it is fucking assholes. Um Twitter blue motherfuckers. Um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I love uh, not to tangent on that, but so many people are having to come out and be like, I did not pay for Twitter blue. Yeah. Um, please, <laughs> please don't imply that I did. Oh yeah. yeah. No, there's now some talk that the Twitter might get sued for. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's false you know. endorsement laws. You know, yep. I, 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 I've got no idea if those will actually hold up in court, but it's fun to, it's fun that they'll have to pay to find out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we don't need to talk about the Musk. <laughs> yeah. Fucking asshole. Go to hell. That guy should. Um, <laughs> uh, David. Diagram that sentence. <laughs> uh, David, how about you? Uh, listener, uh, uh, developers listening to uh, to their audience. I, I think I'd go with uh, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, where they, they basically realized that their game sucked and we should make an anime instead and it was great <laughs> anime 
I like the backhanded uh, answers we're giving this time. <laughs> yeah, talk, a lot of spiciness here. Talk about a uh, talk about a game that's not gonna um, that's not gonna outlive its. Uh, I, I just really don't think that game is going to be anything other than a failure, no matter how much work they do on it. I mean, I mean, I, I met someone recently. Uh, you know, was talking to someone recently that I really respect that apparently loves uh, the game. So maybe it's gotten a lot better, but I don't know. Oh, it's I mean, it's totally possible. Go ahead, Ben. At least people got their money back with that game. True. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and Dennis, how about you? Yeah, my answer was going to be No Man's Sky. So. Oh yeah. I guess backup uh, answer: uh, Minecraft Dungeons. And I have to be intentional because now there's Minecraft Legends. Uh, which that game looks about, rad. I, I have I'm, not played yet, but yeah. My fingers constantly hovering under the over the install on that in Windows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Minecraft Dungeons, um, when they implemented battle passes, they did it so that they never expire and you can just select which one you want to be advancing. So uh, nice of them, you know, if you're going to go to that kind of model to to make it a uh, very uh, relaxed experience rather than, oh, I have to play this enough to get all the stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I really want someone to explain the like model behind the live service thing, because it seems to me the ideal scenario is not I play every day, it's I pay and then don't play every day. So, like, letting me pay and then, like, procrastinate on when I actually play the season pass seems seems great. No. If, uh, if there was someone who taught a class on the business of video games, they could probably comment on that. Yeah. Uh, like, too, too, too bad we don't have anybody like that here. So. <laughs> We it's 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 all about stability it's all it's all about predictability and in income so seasonal service model means you're subscribed and you're you're having income coming in regularly wait a minute so you mean subscribers lets you budget for stuff like having a producer on board <laughs> yes <laughs> okay cool good to know i'll make a note for that <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh well thank you folks uh for writing in uh, uh, more, more good news out there than I expected there to be, uh, except from us, uh, two, two, two out of the four here were, uh, we, we are dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, not dead inside, just dancing on graves, I think. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but yes, if you would like to partic- participate in these in the future, you can go to, uh, Facebook, do a search for duck feed community, watch for the prompts to go up on Monday afternoons. Uh, I will say if you are, uh, trying to get into the group, uh, it is a private, I don't know if it's a private group. It's restricted to where you've got to answer like questions and prompts. If you're, if you're not going to answer the questions and the prompts there, like confirm that you read the stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to let you in. Uh, there's like an automatic rule and stuff like that. So just make sure you do that. It takes a couple of seconds. Just, just, just as a, as a heads up, had a few people just be like, ah, no, don't need to, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't bode well for rule following i would yeah, say yeah. There's, a, there's some self-filtering going on there yes yeah so just uh just letting you know there's a little thing just just like when you join any facebook group um thank you Jenis, for uh for posting the question mm-hmm. the end boss now it is time for the end boss where we talk about things that are going on in the world of video games oftentimes that are exciting to us i'm going to start off with an exciting one uh, there's more happening in, uh, the, uh, labor organization movement at a larger studio. Uh, some workers at, uh, Sega, uh, at their Irvine, uh, office, Sega, uh, Sega of America. Uh, they have formed a, uh, I believe it is the video games industries. It is one of their first cross departmental, um, uh, uh, uh unions, uh, that they are uh, that they are trying to get a uh, get, get, get off the ground that they have declared. Uh, it is Aegis, uh, which is the Allied Employees Guild, improving Sega. Um, most other video game uh, unionization efforts have started in QA departments um, or have been uh, kind of uh, relegated to a single department. This one is spanning across uh, multiple different uh, kind of disciplines. I mean, uh, which, they had to unionize fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Well, you know, it gets a bit, it's, it, it is, it is, it is better, but it is also more complicated because you are, uh, working with different, uh, let's say silos and management and also negotiating, you know, the, uh, the compensation needs and, uh, like work condition needs are different, uh, between like, let's say, you know, QA and production, right? Just, uh, different jobs. But the overall goal seems to be uh, for standardization of pay uh, and generally changing conditions so that people can, I don't know, rely on having a job at the company for more than a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Uh, Basically, a push across the game unionization effort uh, has been uh, for a move away from the Hollywood model where people are brought on en masse in order to, uh, you know, complete a project and then just let go. Uh, as soon as the thing goes gold or gets close to it uh, in order to go find their next project, making the argument that if uh, people can count on being with the company for a while, they will be loyal and probably do better work. Uh, So Mm -hmm. this is along with demands for, uh, you know, more adequate staffing, uh, better timelines uh, and just general quality of life kind of stuff. Uh, to end patterns of overwork, which is an endemic pr- uh, problem across the entire industry. Uh, I wish them a huge amount of success as they uh, as they uh, try to get this going. Uh, and man, just continue this tide, baby. Keep this rolling. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't even know if there's more to say about it because obviously this is just a declaration of of intent. They have the majority of the roles, you know, they've got the votes necessary to get the process started. Uh, But we will see what happens uh, as they go up against management. There is little indication of how uh, the American side of the business will, uh, you know, has been responding to this. Although part of the uh, uh, kind of initiation for this had to do with Sega of Japan doing something that a lot of uh, game companies, uh, companies, in general um over there have uh, been doing which is uh unbidden raising uh salaries uh in order to uh kind of address kind of wide sweeping just labor morale problems <laughs> mm-hmm. across there kind of doing like address a, the fact that they had not been keeping up with where they should be yes yeah uh because uh, like their their leader uh i believe <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to say good things. Yeah, I don't even know who it was. But like when the government said, hey, this uh, is probably a problem that we're not paying people what they're worth in relation to how much it costs to live, uh, especially when we are expecting them to work in these cities that are incredibly expensive to live in. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the company has actually listened and said, oh, yeah, it's probably good if our employees have, you know, just just a little bit more slack in general. And then And then they listened. That is not a part of our culture over here. Uh, our culture is to work people and starve them and make it so they have to live as far away from the city where they work as possible. You don't want to starve them if that interferes with their working. You just want to feed them enough so that they can work. Yeah, you don't want to feed them so eh. much that, they, that they've that they got a lot of willpower. That's true. That low, that's yeah, true. That, you know, you keep yeah. it low protein, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's my story. I just, uh, uh, rat as hell, I always do, a, do, a, do a, a tiny little fist bump when I see one of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Hey, uh, uh, hey, Dennis, speaking of weird working conditions, what's yeah. a lot of the work happening at Sony amounting to? Yeah. <laughs> so th- this isn't actually, this is a more positive story than it seems from the headline. I will say, um, it, it's an interesting peek behind the curtain of, of how things work at Sony in terms of developing games. Uh, Shuhei Yoshida, you know, was president of Sony Interactive uh, through 2019. He isn't anymore, but he's still very involved in the development of games there. Um, And he talked about uh, the fact that they they actually cancel a lot of games projects before uh, they ever see the light of day. Um, you know, the, the teams there, the devs there are, are prototyping and, and developing ideas constantly. Um, and they want those people to be able to take risks and try out their things and, and not just continually pump out the one sure thing, um, you know, live service game yeah, that uh, the yeah. world is trending towards. Um, and, and so in order to do that, they have uh, kind of a system in place where, hey, you, you try lots of things, let's prototype type out lots of things, uh, and we'll cancel lots of things as well. Like yeah. uh, there's a lot of games that kind of get their prototype and you're like, ah, this isn't it. 
Um, and rather than firing these people or, or sending them out to bay or uh, potentially worse, just sticking them grinding on a project that you know isn't going to work, um, Sony is pretty good about pulling the ripcord on a bad project so that those people can shift their resources towards another new idea. Was this? I feel like this is very much putting a smiley face on like, we're just going to have you work on a lot of worthless stuff over and over again. Well, it's interesting. Again, going to like business models and, and stuff like that to to have innovation and to have um, cool new ideas. You, you have, have to exploit to... labor. Well, I mean, okay. they're, being, they're 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 being they're being compensated. It's just a matter of it'll, if it'll be released or not. You know, yeah. And well, and and, like, and there's you know feelings get hurt. You know, some people are working on their passion project and they they really believe in the idea and um you know that you got to tell them, hey, sorry, this is not it. Um, like that, that can be complicated, but in general, I I think it is actually a healthy thing to see a, um, design process, whatever you want to call it, that, uh, uh, allows for experimentation and more out there things Mm -hmm. without, um, you know, being devastated if it doesn't work out, like to, to, to be innovative like that, you need to be able to fail on stuff. Um, cause otherwise you're always staying, you know, that far in from the boundary because you can't go over it. Yeah. I mean, like this is, I mean, kind of similar and maybe this is fraught because it's been a long time since I've been in industry, but like similar to, you know, what a lot of larger companies will do, which is a model of like startup within a, within a blue chip kind of thing. Oh yeah. No, I, I don't, I, I know someone who works in this industry, this sounds, does not sound like a positive thing to me. No. This sounds like, uh, we want, we want our employees to just constantly be, uh, you know, passionate and rushing on these uh prototypes so that you know they're working more hours and uh yeah nah, no way hmm. um was this interview uh, like in relation to a particular project like like how did this information kind of come to light uh it was an interview with the guardian um and he was he was talking in the context of embracing new ideas gotcha gotcha so yeah i mean it, I, I, I don't have receipts to say that this is not a, uh, a toxic thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have receipts to say that yeah. uh, it is. Uh, I think it's, it's an interesting peek behind the curtain to see yeah. like, Hey, this is, this is a method of developing that uh, um, at least theoretically allows for more experimental stuff. My get my guess is like, my guess would be that this is, th- th- this is kind of more predominant than he is letting on, you know, mm-hmm. in terms of, in, in terms of a model. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of like most, most companies are going to have to operate this way or. Yeah. Yeah. Just to, just in terms of like, I don't know, cutting bait, you you know, letting, letting people figure out like, Hey, is this thing going to be viable? Um, Yeah. There are a bunch of different ways to frame it and a bunch of different ways to implement it as well. Yeah. I think what it comes down to is how do you reward people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so if it's a thing where like you only, uh, you know, reward the ideas that ultimately you know, win, then this really accomplishes nothing. On the other hand, if you're actually, you know, rewarding innovation and trying new things, um, you know, I could see that, but you're not doing that because you're a company. <laughs> yeah, I've got no idea. <laughs> uh, he, he does. He says, like, the, the primary idea is to move people along when they're stuck. Like, hey, if this is if this is getting to a place where you can't see a way to move forward, there's a mechanism to, like, all right, go go to the next thing. Yeah. Um, David, what's going on with that thing that I s- swooped earlier, and I'm sorry <laughs> about it. No, no problem. Swoop was struck. Uh, You're fine. <laughs> yeah. So a uh, a streamer um got a whole bunch of uh booster packs for the next magic the gathering um expansion Mm -hmm. mom releasing in two weeks i think exactly and uh you know somehow got them earlier and you know i guess opened them up on stream and then um had the pinkertons show up to their uh uh door because wizards had uh sicked uh sicked their thugs on them you, you you mean the mercenary strike break, strike breakers? Do they have like a Bioshock Infinite portal where they could just pull fucking Booker in <laughs> to yes. to do this? I know I know the Pinkertons have, have been active. Like Amazon hired them, I believe, at some point. Like somehow that name is not Poison. 
<laughs> and yeah. they can just continue going because well, because large because enough companies, they're, you know, their customers are corporations. Like none yeah, of their yeah. history is a negative if you're a corporation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> they have the um, exact opposite emotional reaction. Like, oh, hey, the Pinkertons are still around. All right. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Let's go. Let's get them in. Let's have a yeah. long reputation. Jesus. So they I... apparently threatened to uh, get the sheriff involved and uh, that, you know, there could be uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. Yeah, they're going to fine up for 200000 Yeah. Yeah, in a decade in uh, jail. What? And so they, they Nintendoed him. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, and it what, appear- what are the charges that they're threatening? Oh, bullshit. Probably nothing, but you don't want to try and find out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> because uh, the company mailed it to you without any kind of, I, I've got no idea if they gave any kind of term sheet about whether or not you're able to uh, uh, broadcast. I would say that's kind of a shame on you thing if they mailed it to an influencer and said, yeah. hey, don't put anything on here. By opening this, you accept that you're not going to broadcast about this before a certain date. Mm-hmm. So my understanding, the speculation I saw is, I don't know, Magic the Gathering expansions all have silly names. This this is apparently like Gobbledy Gook, the uh, Awakening or whatever. Super original, and, yeah. And is there it... was a, a previously a like just Gobbledy Gook um, expansion. And so, um, and the person who, uh, you know, the streamer said, you know, the person who bought it from, you know, he asked for the gobbledygook um, cards. And so he thinks that just someone from Wizards just like shipped the wrong box by mistake. This is literally just a transposition, like clerical thing. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so he returned it to Wizards and they apparently apologized and like, I don't know. I think I send him a whole bunch of booster packs or something. But, but the message is out. Yeah. You know. All right. So I looked up the names. March of the Machine, uh, affectionately called Mom, is the is uh, the one that's out right now. Apparently, the one that he might have maybe got was March of the Machine Aftermath, which is oh, a okay. different set than, that they have. But it makes sense why there would be confusion there. Yeah. Um, man, they really, Wizards cool. of the Coast makes it really hard to want to say good things about a story set in the Forgotten Realms that has a mimic in it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've got so much fucking goodwill for the stuff that is around this. I understand D&D and Magic are separate things, but they are so related and it is I the mean, same company. Not completely anymore. Uh, yeah, I see, yeah, I suppose there is that. Also, Lord of the Rings and I don't know so many other things all these crossovers that are uh, the, the, that are happening there it's like man they really ought to get somebody in charge of their corporate image because they can't keep being evil no they can't because oh, yeah, that's just yeah, the yeah, way say, can't they <laughs> it'd be super cool if they felt at, if they demonstrated any shame at all about it but yeah you know, I would feel better about being a fan of D&D shit you know. Does it increase their profits if they feel shame about it? Absolutely not. Well, can, pre- can we find a way to make that happen? <laughs> pre- pre- pretending they have how, shame I mean, about how, it. Will... How, how do you feel about uh, revolution? <laughs> <laughs> can't, you can't feel shame if you're executed, though. Well, oh, you know, I mean, for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, bad move wizards that you're not going to be punished for at all <sighs> just uh yeah thank god they made nice with this guy versus uh like i, I said nintendoing it yeah yeah i still don't get how the nintendo thing like how is that even illegal i mean there I mean, are other than just we live in a dystopia it's uh it, it really i mean I don't know. It's a bigger topic than we can get into here with the time that we have left tonight. Mm -hmm. I would say it is really disappointing and fucked up what they are doing to Gary Bowser. Uh, Fucking hate it. Um, Ben, 
rescue us. Both of these <laughs> things that you have here are good news, and I'm in an uncertainty about which one to ask you about. So I'm just going to say story, please. Yeah, uh, it's a short and sweet one. There's more content for Case of the Golden Idol coming out on the 27th, which is two days from when we record and one day before when this is released. So Badass. Hooray. It's out. What is Case of the Golden Idol again? It's oh, it's a, a game we've talked about game. many times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At least two times. Yeah. It's uh, it's a birthday game. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's the game that I got for I got for Ben and then Ben got for me because our birthdays are so close to close to each other. It's a mystery solving game compared it to uh um oh gosh, um Kinda Return like of the Uber Din. Oh, yeah. okay. I know I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh um, so is it is it just one more is it like another chapter like set of cases or uh, uh like do we have details about it? I believe it's DLC, but the this news was released very uh in an obfuscated way where uh, random pictures were sent to game companies and like the pictures had different names on it and uh, <laughs> and had different images so like to one company it got sent a picture of like this monster holding a lantern and it says april on the ceiling and then another one is the same monster but he's holding the lantern out to the side and it says 27th and then another one has like a clock and uh the title of the file was uh pacific so it was like 10 o'clock Pacific time is what they assume is when it's going to come out. Yep. Um, but Usual launch time for things on Steam. Yeah. yeah. So, But it'll be a DLC. So I'm not sure how big it'll be or how much it'll be since it has been the information has come out in a very uh, cryptic way. I've said this about a few things today, but rad as hell. Uh, yeah. I had no idea that that was even in the offing. Um, is uh is the dragon dude holding the lamp a uh, current character that you've seen, or is this probably a new person for the DLC? Well, I don't want to spoil too much about the game and the storyline of the game, but it fits in the world. So yes. okay, yeah. yeah, okay. Man, people need to play that game. I'm trying to yeah. figure out a way to do it on WAF, where it's a problem because I've already played it and I know the solutions. How do I structure an episode to recreate the deduction process that I went through playing it? Uh, Have Uh, somebody else play it who hasn't played it before and just commentate, I guess. (laughs) Huh? Yeah. It's actually a pretty good way to do it. Huh? Anyway, uh, that game owns. I love it. Yeah. What a, what a great one, two punch between that and Pentiment coming out at the end of last year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here's the game of the years. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, by the time this episode comes out, we're doing Pentiment in June. It's episode uh, 400, 400 of WAF. Yeah. Uh, Wait, so have you finished that game? No, I've not. I've not finished it. No, I'm going to be okay, starting okay. it. I've got a couple more uh, kind of ahead of it. Uh, but okay, uh, okay. yeah, no, I am. I am down for a. I am down for a very stylistic narrative choice game about faith. That sounds yeah. cool to me. Again, said it to me times today. Rad as hell. So. <laughs> Um, nice. Well, I will be, uh, keeping an eye out for the case of the golden idol DLC had, uh, had no idea that was coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you all feel about buttoning it up? Buttons. Buttons. Enthusiasm. The credit. Thank you so much for listening to level number 455. We really appreciate you taking the time and tuning in. Someone's typing furiously. Get, get your, uh, Oops, get, get your titles down. I was, I was furiously. Uh, yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to get something for the end in time, and it there was an error. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, no, no, don't worry. Didn't mean. Didn't mean to make you self conscious. I'm, I'm going to mute and do the exact same thing I was doing. Okay. <laughs> No worries. Um, uh, I've got all the usual admin stuff. If you want to help the show, you know how you can. Uh, If you don't, uh, then uh, you can leave a rating or review. You can subscribe in your podcast directory of choice. You can um, uh, uh, become a member on Patreon. Uh, in order to get all the bonus content that's uh, the, that comes down. I don't talk about it an awful lot here, but like we have a bunch of bonus shows. Like at $5, you get a monthly show about horror movies that we do called Unfilmable. Uh, this uh, month, we talked about uh, Silence of the Lambs, which uh, obviously is a classic, uh, but uh, we felt like watching it anyway, and it was interesting and complicated to go back to. You know, given the mm. gender stuff that they, yeah. Uh, yeah, got wrong there. You know, uh, but uh, it, it's it's still it it is a movie that fucks, but also is I say that in a good in a good way. It rules. Uh, but do you want to fuck it? 
Jesus. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, it's a movie that's very good, but, uh, you know, you, you, you got feelings because you forget that it was made 30 plus years ago, which is which is wild to think. Um, yeah. So all that's available for you there. I'm giving Dennis time uh, is the is the thing. <laughs> Um, uh, is, the, is the stuff that's like wrong about it, like how they portray the killer, or is it the stuff with like how Clarice is treated? Um, so the stuff about how Clarice is treated, like it very much has, uh, it's very intentional about that. Like it is, it is against the way that others, you know, kind of treat her. Uh, and it does a very good job of putting the audience in her point of view. Yeah. Uh, to make you really empathize with the way things are stacked against her, you know, the By stuff that is oh, close ups of males looking directly into the camera. <laughs> yes. Being very uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just a, just a matter of, but the way Buffalo Bill uh, is, 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 is treated, yeah. you know, and yeah. the intentional ways that they tried to sidestep it, that still ended up making it. So the most memorable parts of the movie are things that are held against trans people to this very day. You know, that yeah. kind of stuff. So it's complicated. And that's kind of where we come down on it, because it'd be wild to say that it is not an effective film. But, you know, um, Dennis, what were you going to tell the nice people? Uh, no, I, w- I was waiting for our sign offs. Oh, OK. Uh, <laughs> is there anything <laughs> I'm forgetting to promote? I don't think so. All right. Oh, if you're going to be at Origins or Gen Con this year, let me know. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're going to be at Korg's in Columbus, uh, coming up in, uh, the, uh, this, I believe it's the second Saturday of, uh, May. Let me know. Um, I'm going to be, be there retro game show kind of thing. Uh, cool. Uh, I've been Cole Ross. You can catch my streams on Twitch at Duckfeed TV. I've been Dennis Furia and I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I don't have access to real time information or specific context about individuals. Therefore, I can't provide you with the whereabouts of a specific person named Dennis Furia. Uh, Can you please provide me with more information or context so I can better understand your question and try to help you? Is that what you're typing in? Were you asking (laughs) ChatGPT how to sign off? (laughs) I was I was asking ChatGPT uh, where they could find me. Uh, okay, okay. Boo. I'm, I'm I'm David Mysmith. Uh I'm Ben Merkel. You can find me in Storybook Brawl Discord servers uh, <laughs> laughing. Shot and fruit. Shot and fruit. And stick around for some titles. So I don't, so, I don't so, think I don't it's, think it's coincidence that the German language has both a word for Schadenfreude and also the emptiness inside of something like a <laughs> like a bicycle tire. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's got to be a, uh, strike the swoop. <laughs> yeah, I I had that one. I think it's clearly going to be that one. Although I also had somebody's fetish, <laughs> and <laughs> I a late one I had. Gonna mute and do the thing I was already doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a record number of titles this week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did have somebody's fetish. Uh, I had uh, strike the swoop. Uh, it's 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 the new bite the steez. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also had a moss in the crick. Okay. Um, jank recognized jank. <laughs> the OG OGL. Okay. And then got to unionize fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the other one that I had uh, was a crab first experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. All right. What you got, Ben? The only one I had that wasn't said was chicken booification. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, well, it's got to be strike the swoop. <laughs> yep. Cool. Well, it is to strike while that swoop is hot. (laughs) It is decided.